is very important for our church life. Um, so, so um, I'll cover the um, the first half of the uh, outline, which is mainly on what the wisdom is or who the wisdom is, Amen. right? And then the second half, Brother Andrew will cover how it's related to the fulfillment of God's eternal purpose. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 But first, what is the uh, the definition of wisdom, right? Um, so this was given during the, uh, the training. Deep understanding. This is uh, just dictionary definition. Deep understanding. Keen discernment. Capability for insight. Capacity for sound judgment and experiential understanding. It's pretty good, right? Like just to um, just to have some understanding of the word wisdom gives us insight into what wisdom really is, right? Do we have deep understanding in the things that we need, right? Do we have keen discernment, right. capability for insight, right? Well, so wisdom is the way we plan and then initiate and carry out things. And especially when we encounter a difficult situation, then we need wisdom, right? To overcome the situation. So even now, uh, humanly speaking, if we have wisdom, then we'll do things in a proper way. But if we lack wisdom, then we'll do foolish things, right? <clears throat> so that's why we need wisdom. Mm -hmm. But in the world, there's also different kind of wisdom. And uh, that is mentioned in these two verses. Um, there's a way which seems right to a man, but the end of it is the ways of death, right? Leads to death. And then in the world, there's also wisdom that is not, it's not that which descends from above, but is earthly. So that means it's from um, the human realm and then soulish. So it comes from the self and it's even demonic. Wow. You know, so um, this kind of wisdom actually is just so much so prevalent in the world right now like all the universities right they're just trying to teach people this kind of wisdom the earthly soulish and demonic and then the source of that is just the self right our fallen human nature but the uh, the wisdom what we need to seek is the wisdom of god right hallelujah the wisdom of god so the fear of jehovah is the beginning of wisdom we need to uh, seek after god right and to have the fear of god and then we need to seek the knowledge of the holy one and that is understanding that's the kind of wisdom that we're seeking we're seeking for the wisdom that is from above it's god himself actually and god has the deepest wisdom right the deepest wisdom like the, the wisdom that we human beings have it has not it has the appearance of wisdom but it's actually um it's foolish because in the end, it leads to death, right? But God's wisdom is so deep, so profound, and it really shows what um, God has purposed in himself in the fulfilling of his purpose. I mean, fulfilling his heart's desire, right? How is he going to um, fulfill his purpose? That is all because of his wisdom. And uh, when we start to search it, well, you know, we'll figure out that it's so deep and it's so profound. And then, uh, so it's even unsearchable, untraceable, right? But, um, but it's something that we just need to praise the Lord with because, because uh, that really shows us how great our God is, right? Yeah. Our God has the deepest wisdom. Amen, hallelujah. So coming to the outline, um, the book of Proverbs stresses wisdom that we receive from God through contacting God, right? So um, actually, you know, um, one thing that's kind of important for us in our church life um, is um, we need to have a, uh, a living that is godly. We need to live a godly life. And how do we live a godly life, right? That is actually all in the book of Proverbs. The Proverbs, the book of Proverbs helps us to live a godly life, it is all by God's wisdom. So if we have this wisdom, then that is the key, right? For us to live a godly life. This year in the church in Fremont, one of the emphases 
of our church goal is to have godly living, or well, godly family life, godly family. And um, the crucial aspect of the godly family, right? Um, it's true, number one is we need love. That's right, we need love. But then sometimes love is not enough. Mm. Sometimes uh, we need something uh, more and uh, well, something else. And that is wisdom. We need wisdom for us to live a godly life. Right. And then so that is the subject of the book of Proverbs. We can, we can see God's wisdom in the book of Proverbs. So praise the Lord that we have this thing. And then the central thought of Proverbs is that we seek after wisdom so that we may live a godly life on earth that is acceptable to God, right? So this, this is a true wisdom. True wisdom is so that we can live a godly life on earth that is acceptable to God. It's not to be wise in ourselves. It's not to be smart. It's not for people to admire us, but it is so that we can live a life that is acceptable to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And this wisdom comes from God, right? Jehovah gives wisdom. So it is from above. It's not from ourselves. Mm. Jehovah gives us wisdom and from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. That's why we need to come to his word, right? To receive who he is and um, to receive his wisdom and to receive the knowledge of, of Jehovah and then to have the understanding that we need in order to live a godly life. Thank the Lord, all these things are in the word and then it is also made um, really clear to us through the ministry. So we really, really enjoy this ministry that opens up the word of God to shows us, that shows us uh, what truly wisdom is. Amen. Wisdom is more valuable and better than gold and silver and corals is more desirable than anything else. Can we say that wisdom is um, more desirable than, than all our bank accounts, right? All the stock that we have, all the mutual funds, all the retirement, you know, all those things. I, yeah, those things are valuable, but wisdom is more valuable than those things, right? Than gold, silver, corals, anything else, more desirable. And we need to seek after wisdom. This, act, this wisdom is actually God himself, right? So hallelujah that we can seek after wisdom together. Amen. In certain portions of Proverbs, the wisdom of God is personified, right? Uh -huh. so, so that means, um, that means uh, you know, it's related to a person. And uh, this person, I guess we'll see a little later, but uh, there's so many verses um, in uh, the book of Proverbs that shows us uh, a wisdom is a person, right? Here it says, I wisdom. Wow, you know, even has the first person, I dwell with prudence and I find knowledge and discretion. Amen. And in this verse, I love those who love me and those who seek me diligently will find me. So that's why we need to love wisdom and then we need to seek after wisdom. And then seek him with diligence. In this way, we will find him. Hallelujah. The Lord is near to us who seek after him. Amen. So why this personification, right? That is because it is a reference to the second of the divine trinity, Christ, right? Who became wisdom from God to all the New Testament believers. So this wisdom is actually a person. Is the Lord Jesus Himself, and then um, we we love Him, and then we seek after Him. If we seek after Him diligently, then we will find Him. We will gain Him. As New Testament believers, we need to come to the Lord every morning to enjoy this um, transmission right from God, and enjoy Him as God's wisdom. Amen. Amen. And then in the, um, the Old Testament, right, or in the old creation, um, God, by wisdom, founded the earth. So the earth that we're living here was founded by wisdom, right, which is Christ himself. And then also in the uh, establishing of the heavens, it was also by Christ. 
So by Christ, Jehovah founded the earth and established heavens. Hallelujah. And so is the um, wisdom as the master workman of God's creation of all things. Right? So everything in God's creation was by this divine wisdom and it is God's delight. So we, we see, when we see the, uh, the beautiful creation, what we see is actually God's wisdom, right? So we marvel and admire how deep and profound his wisdom is, even in the old creation. But you will see a lot more, even, even more in the new creation, right? God's divine wisdom will be manifested. So, oh, the depths of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. You know, um, um, <clears throat> it says, right, um, um, it says, he uses words like untraceable and unsearchable, right? Um, but it's very interesting. We still need to, we still need to trace it, <laughs> right? Even though it's untraceable. Um, and it's also unsearchable, but we need to go search it out. But another way of saying is it takes eternity for us to trace the wisdom of God. It takes eternity for us to uh, search out the wisdom of God, you know? And then so we'll be enjoying God's wisdom for eternity. Hallelujah. So that's how great, how deep his wisdom and his knowledge is. And these days, right? We are in a pandemic and then a lot of things are happening. We don't understand why these things are happening, but we have to believe and trust. It is all according to his wisdom, right? Everything is in his hand and he will take us step by step until we can be raptured. So we need to put our trust in the Lord's wisdom. Amen. Amen. At this point, um, talking about uh, here, the difference between wisdom and knowledge, right? Wisdom and knowledge, slight difference. Of course, they're related because they come together, but what is the difference, right? Wisdom is for planning and purposing. So before we do anything, right? We plan, we purpose, you know, and then, uh, then, then next we go into execution mode, right? We apply what we have planned. So wisdom is is for the planning, is for the initiating, initiating of something that is seen, that is our wisdom, right? But then uh, when we start to apply what we have initiated, then um, it shows our knowledge. So in this way, actually um, God, right? First initiated all these things by his wisdom. And then when God comes in to apply what he has initiated, then he displays his knowledge, right? When, um, um, when Jehovah commanded the children of Israel to build a tabernacle, right? He called Bezalel. And then uh, he says, uh, he has filled him with the spirit of God, with wisdom and with understanding and with knowledge and with all kinds of workmanship. So, so he filled him with first the spirit of God. So actually, you know, the spirit of God gives us all these things, the wisdom, the understanding, and the knowledge. And this was needed for the, the designing of the furniture and the building of the tabernacle, right? So this is an illustration that first we need wisdom. And then when we start to build and so on, then we need the, uh, the knowledge, the understanding, and so on. But all that comes from the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Everything is in the spirit of God. Amen. Okay, so um, B, the, uh, the wisdom of God is God's wisdom in a mystery and the wisdom that has been hidden, which God predestined before the ages for our glory. So, you know, um, this mystery, right? Mystery is something that is hidden, but at the appointed time, it will be revealed, right? It's different from secret. Secret is, you know, something... We, uh, we hide and then we may not show to other people. The mystery is, you know, it's, it's like, a, it's like a behind a veil. And then at the appointed time, it gets unveiled. Then all of a sudden we get to see. What do we see? In the end, we'll see the glory. We'll, we'll see the glory of God, right? 
But until that time, it was hidden. It was in a, it was in a mysterious stage. And then so slowly, little by little, God's wisdom is being revealed, right? In, in what is going on right now, he is fulfilling his purpose. And uh, when his purpose is fully revealed, then we'll just marvel, we'll just praise the Lord for his wisdom, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, amen. amen. Maybe um, I'll, I'll go a little faster and then skip over this point, these points, and then uh, go to Roman 3. Christ is the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. The, the verse, right? Christ is wisdom to us from God. And then also this uh, 1 Corinthians one twenty four talks about Christ being the power of God and the wisdom of God. So he's both the power and the wisdom of God. Wisdom, again, is for the initiating, and then power of God um, is for the application, for the execution of his uh, purpose. So Christ is both the power of God and the wisdom of God, right? And then um, when the Lord was growing up as a child, right? Um, he was already this uh, personified wisdom, but this wisdom was growing. It was according to the, uh, his growth, right? So here's a principle that as we grow, we gain more wisdom, right? So we need to grow in life so we can gain more wisdom, right? The more we, gain, the more we grow in the Lord, the more wisdom we will get. So praise the Lord for this. Amen. Amen. And then in the New Testament, the Lord Jesus said uh, here, wisdom is justified by all her children. What does that mean, right? Very interesting. Justified or vindicated, right? This wisdom was justified, vindicated first by his wise works. Amen. That's right. By, he, by what he did, but also by by her children, the children of wisdom. Well, who are the children of wisdom? Those who believe in Christ are the children of wisdom. So it's actually us, right? We, we are those who justify Christ and his deeds and who follow him as our wisdom. We are those, we're the children of wisdom and then we justify Christ as God's wisdom. Amen. Skipping over to B. In Christ, all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden. In whom all the treasures of no wisdom and knowledge are hidden, right? So, so these are actually treasures. And then again, they're hidden. So we need to go and then search them out. We need to go find them, right? We need to find the treasures. These are really precious to us. And um, the wisdom and knowledge, they're both hidden in Christ, right? A lot of uh, worldly people seek after worldly wisdom, worldly knowledge, but um, those are not weak value, right? We value the wisdom of God, which are all in Christ. So that's why every single day we need to turn to the Lord and then gain him as the wisdom and knowledge that we need day by day. Amen. You know, uh, um, I, I had a Christian friend who uh who told me about this uh, one very interesting verse. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings to search a matter out, right? So, so things are hidden, but then God wants to go and search them out. We need to have such a seeking heart, right? To seek out um, the hidden things. The hidden things, what are the hidden things, right? The hidden things are the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. That's what we're doing. We're seeking after wisdom and knowledge, which are hidden in Christ, who is the mystery of God. Amen. And then those things are in um, recorded in the Lord's words, especially in the Gospel of Matthew and then Gospel of John, right? They contain, these two Gospels contain a lot of the words of the Lord. And then when we read his words, we can really understand what well, we can really appreciate. There's this highest philosophy, right? 
Amen. For example, the uh, the heavenly constitution. Right? Who can come up with heavenly constitution? Only the heavenly king can come up with such um, um, heavenly constitution. And then also in the book of John, talking about life, right? And then he uses very simple terms, but he is speaking something very deep, such as the vine tree, right? And then um, even in the in his uh, shepherding, right, really shows. Um, God's heart and then God's purpose. So those words are really so precious to us. And then they really contain the highest philosophy, right? Nothing in the world compares to what the Lord Jesus has said himself. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah for the words of Christ. Amen. Amen. And then um, since wisdom and knowledge are stored up in Christ as a treasure, we cannot have wisdom and knowledge unless we have Christ. We cannot separate the, uh, the wisdom from Christ, right? We cannot have the true wisdom without Christ. That's why we need to gain Christ, right? Christ is so much to us. He is the wisdom and knowledge. So, so the final point, right? That's the, uh, the most important exercise for us every single day. If we exercise our being to contact the Lord, Christ, as the life-giving spirit, will saturate our spirit and our mind. Amen. Right? First, it starts with our spirit. Amen. But also needs to fill our mind so that we will have in our experience the wisdom and knowledge that are hidden in Christ. Amen. Right. We just love the Lord as the life-giving spirit who ministers to us wisdom and knowledge, which are just he himself. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now I'll turn it over to Andrew. Amen. So we need to be saturated with the Spirit. When we come to an outline like this, uh, we, we need the Spirit of the mind. Our mind needs to be saturated with the Spirit. That's how we can receive light and truth and revelation. The, the true light and revelation are not apart from the Spirit. That's why this matter of uh, pray, reading the Word is, uh, is so important. When we come to a, uh, any kind of outline, when we come to the Word, we have to pray over them. And a lot of times it's better for us to pray, read, after we have some understanding. Then you mingle your understanding with the Word. Then you pray these things into you, right? You, you, you make these points, your personal prayers, or in a way that to pray these things into you. That this week, I, on day three, we have this wonderful verse, Isaac already pointed out, Proverbs 8.12. This, this verse is just so uh, precious to me. One morning, uh, well, that's Wednesday, right? <laughs> it was prayer reading, uh, this verse, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. I, oh, I, wisdom, Christ is my wisdom. I, wisdom, oh, wisdom, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. Lord, you're the real wisdom. Oh, this wisdom dwells with prudence. Amen. You just keep going, right? You, you keep, you keep, uh, pray over Pray, read the word. Then in the, this week, you have this outline on how this wisdom is a person. Then the points that you receive, right? Some understanding you have, you can pray over, uh, add it to your prayers, enrich your prayers. Then you have, then your appreciation of this matter of Christ being the wisdom will increase. Th this is such a, Wonderful verse. Subconsciously, when we come to this matter of wisdom, we still think wisdom is just some kind of uh, knowledge that we gain or some kind of uh, clever ways that we, we learn in doing things. But here, this verse shows very clearly, I, wisdom. This wisdom is a person. This wisdom is not some kind of techniques. I, wisdom. Oh, Christ is our wisdom. Amen. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. 
Amen. Well, we we all we as brothers, but we often pray read this uh, this this verse in Matthew, uh, how we need to be the Lord's faithful and prudent slaves, and we know that this matter of prudence is how we do things, right? How we organize things, how we manage things. But a lot of times we we think that well, to be a prudent slave, you just need to. Pick up a lot of skills. Well, sure, there's an aspect of that. We need to learn、uh, different ways and how to deal with people. Sure, yeah, you know, there are these kind of knowledge. But here's this I wisdom, dwell with prudence. That means the prudence comes out of wisdom. Unless we gain Christ as wisdom, unless we learn how to take Christ. And how to minister Christ in all kinds of persons, matters, and things in any kind of environment, we will not have the prudence, because this prudence is part of the wisdom, right? The the wisdom dwell with prudence, and 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 the rest of this verse is and I find knowledge and discretion. Everything comes out from wisdom. Everything comes out from this person, Christ. How we learn to do things, right? How how to deal with people, how to handle any kind of difficult situations, it all comes out of this person, wisdom. You can you can、uh, well you can replace this word wisdom with Christ or Christ with wisdom. They're synonymous, right? They're all the same. Christ is the real wisdom. So when we come to this book Proverbs. Uh, we really need to wash away all these kind of natural understanding. We need to wash away all these kind of old thinking that we have, all these kind of、uh, learning that philosophy. We need to wash away these old things so we can come to this book anew to really see Christ as a real wisdom. Then this book is meaningful to us. Then, when we see all these points in the Book of Proverbs, we realize, oh, we're we're actually short of Christ in that matter, right? We 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 realize, oh, we need Christ in this matter. It's not a human perfection. It's not that we can do things better, but we need we need gain Christ as the wisdom. Christ is our real real wisdom. So, saints, we we really need to pray. We need to pray read. The points we need to pray, read the verses. We need to dive into them. Sometimes I I found hard to to pray, read with the saints. You know why? Because we move on so fast. We're we're like we're trying to we're on the bullet train. We're we're trying to get by very quickly. Oh, I wisdom dwell with the prudence. I wisdom dwell with the prudence. Okay, we did it twice. And I find knowledge and discretion. I find this、uh, knowledge. Okay, we did it twice. Okay, next verse. Well, we need to, we need to dive into these verses. Where、right? we need to apply our understanding. We need to apply the light regarding this very thing in the context of these verses, so that we can, we can, we can be immersed and soak with the word. And that's how we can be immersed. And soak with the word is that we pray over them, right? We pray, and again and again we apply the points in our prayers, in our understanding. Since we we all need to try this, you know,、uh, in our during our personal time with the Lord, even in twos and threes, sometimes we we just try to cover things. We we need to spend more time. With the word, right? We need to spend more time with the Lord, and a lot of times, just just one 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 hymn, one stanza.、Uh, sometimes we wake up in the morning, we're just not up to it, and it's okay. We can take a hymn, we can just take a a stanza of a hymn, and we can spend twenty minutes before the Lord, just sing that stanza, right? Cause then a lot of times these hymns cause our hearts to be open to the Lord, and our hearts can be softened toward the Lord. Then the Lord is able to impart something into us.
uh, this, this is really what we're doing here. Without touching the Lord as a spirit, without touching the living word, that we, we cannot see the divine revelation. We cannot pick up the, these kind of divine logic. We need, we need the spirit. We need to exercise our spirit. Right? We need to open our hearts to the Lord. And we especially need the spirit of our mind, that our mind can be exercised with the spirit. Our mind can be filled with the spirit. Then we can really enter into the divine revelation. How about us all practices, right? We, we spend some time. Uh, we need to go before the Lord. And this, this week, um, we, we brothers pray rest on verses in John 15. You know, the requirement for the Lord to abide in us is that we need to abide in the Lord, right? The, the prerequisite for the word to abide in us is that we need to abide in the Lord. So the requirements that we need to spend time, right? The intimate time, more time with the Lord in this way. Now we come to Roman number four. Roman number four is just based on one verse. I feel this is a very helpful and good way to help us to, to how to dive into the truth. Uh, th this, this verse is new to me this, this week, 1 Corinthians 1.30. I don't know how many times we uh, prayer read this, this verse personally and corporately. But this, this week, this verse, I, I've never really paid attention to this little phrase, to us, right? He who became Christ Jesus became wisdom to us from God. This to us implied transmission. To us from God, both righteousness and sanctification and redemption. And these three words, well, I don't want to say little word, but these three words, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption, cover our entire Christian life. So this Christ, this wisdom to us, is everything to our Christian life. I, I don't know if you see this this week. Christ, as wisdom, he became wisdom to us from God. And we're under this divine transmission every moment, right, day by day, so that we can enjoy him as our righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. So for us believers, we are in Christ. So we are already in Christ. Christ has become. So he has already become the wisdom from God to us. A says, when we believers, us a new creation, are and have is of God, not of ourselves. So when we come to a verse, an important verse like this, some, we need to dissect them, right? We need to pick out the facts. Well, here, the first thing we see is that you are in Christ Jesus. What, then you have to ask yourself, what, what, what does it, this mean? Right? We are in Christ Jesus. That means we, as a believers, we are the new creation. And here it says, but of him, you are in Christ Jesus. That means that part, right? The new creation part, are and have is of God, not of ourselves. And B says, us, our wisdom, right here you have Christ Jesus who became wisdom to us. So Christ is our wisdom. So B, trying to explain to us how Christ, well, what kind of wisdom is Christ to us? He says, as our wisdom, Christ is all-inclusive, becoming Christ to us from God in three ways. So when people ask you, well, what, what, how, how is Christ's wisdom to you? Well, then we can explain to you, Christ, this all-inclusive one, becoming wisdom to us from God in three matters, in righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. Then you have one, two, and three explaining to us how Christ is our righteousness. Once it's by Christ as our righteousness, we are being justified by God. So this matter of the righteousness has everything to do with the justification, right? with the judicial redemption. And what's the result of this justification? What's the result of enjoying and receiving Christ as 
as our righteousness, right, as our wisdom, is that we might be reborn in our spirit to receive the divine life. So this matter of the justification, this matter of Christ being our righteousness, is, has something to do with our regeneration and, and also receiving the divine life. Then two says by Christ as our sanctification. Christ is not only our righteousness, he's our sanctification. We are being sanctified in our soul. This, this is still going on, right? Christ is our sanctification. What's the result of this? The result is that we can be transformed in our mind, emotion, and will with his divine life. So once it's that we have received, right here, we have received the divine life, but for him to become our sanctification, that we can be transformed uh, with his divine life. We need to receive more and more divine life so we can be transformed. Then we have covered this quite a bit in the past uh, messages. And three, Christ is our redemption, is for the redemption of our body. But you see, the righteousness, sanctification, and redemption cover our spirit, our soul, and our body. What's the result of the redemption of our body? We will be transfigured in our body with his divine life to be his glorious likeness. So this divine life will, will spread, right? Eventually, even our body will be filled with this divine life. Then we'll be transfigured. This is a, this Christ as our wisdom, as a wisdom from God. Christ becoming wisdom to us. Cover our spirit, soul, and body. Cover our entire being. This is his complete salvation. So Christ becoming our wisdom is not just we pick up some things uh, from him, but this covers our entire Christian life. So C, you have this important phrase, to us, from God. What does it mean that when Paul said to us from God? It refers to something present, practical, and experiential in the way of transmission. Isn't this wonderful? You just have these two little words, to us, okay, from God, four words, to us, from God. It shows something present right now. Saints, you know, right now, this Christ, this wisdom, is transmitting himself to us from God. It's present. It's practical. In any kind of situation, later on we'll see any kind of situation, any kind of difficulties. When you have some, some when you're confused, well, when, you, when you're not sure what's going on, he is the present and practical, experiential wisdom to us in the way of transmission. He's ready to transmit himself to us. So once it's for Christ to become wisdom to us from God, indicates there is a transmission of Christ's wisdom from God to us for our daily experience. So one, under this matter of the transmission, you have uh, four subpoints. Point one is to show us that this is for our daily experience. Daily. We run into all kinds of things. You know, our, our, our kids have all kinds of uh, things. This is for our daily experience. B says Christ's wisdom should unceasingly flow from God. Well, he says to us from God. It, it has to, this is unceasingly flow from God. Christ's wisdom should unceasingly flow from God to us to be our present practical wisdom in our experience. This, this transmission does not stop. Christ as wisdom, as transmission to us, does not stop. Unceasingly flow from God. But what's the, what's the uh, requirement? Right? I mentioned these uh, verses in John 15, 4 and 5. We need to abide in him. We need to remain with the Lord. How can we receive this unceasingly flow? We need to remain with the Lord to receive his dispensing. Then he will be transmitted into us as a wisdom to handle various problems and matters. We need to remain with the Lord. Right? Then he will transmit himself as wisdom to us. Then when we run into these kind of problems and matters, we will have Christ as wisdom to handle these things. Four, 
if we are one with the Lord and receive his dispensing, right, this is after we, we enjoy, right, receive his dispensing. We will experience and enjoy him as our wisdom day by day and hour by hour. Saints, isn't this good? This is 1 Corinthians one thirty, right? He is wisdom. He, Christ, has become wisdom to us from God for us to experience him, right? He becomes our practical. Right? You have these two pr present, practical, and experiential wisdom in the way of transmission so that we can have him as wisdom to handle various problems and matters. We need to experience and enjoy him day by day and hour by hour. Roman numeral five is based on another verse, right? It's uh, Ephesians 3.10. Saints, how about let's take a minute to pray read this verse, Ephesians 3.10. Let's uh, exercise our spirit uh, to take in this verse, Ephesians 3.10. Amen. Amen. Let's read it Amen. together first. In order, in order that, that now, 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 now rulers, the rulers, rulers and the authorities of the heavenly heavens have a place to be the the church. The church. The church. The church. Yes. Amen. They know through the church. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. And sorry. Right. Amen. Oh, the rulers and authorities. Amen. 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 The multifarious wisdom of God okay. might be made known. Right. Yes. And the multifarious wisdom of God may be made known. Amen. 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 the church. Amen. 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 We display this multifarious wisdom of God. Right. This, this multifarious yeah. wisdom of God is mm. made known through the church. Through the church. Yeah. Oh, through, yeah. the through the church. Amen. Hey, we need to Amen. Amen. the church. We need yeah. to love the church. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Everything Amen. is done through the church. Yes. Amen. So, so this is this Roman numeral five. It again, it's one verse. Right. We we need to dive into this verse. So here, the rulers and authorities are not the kings. They are the angelic rulers and authorities, right? both good and evils. But, but Ephesians 3.10 especially refers to the evil one, right? under B, Satan and his angels. I, I don't um, have time to spend too much time here. So Satan has a, a kingdom. right? That's his uh, sphere of a rule in the air and also on the earth. And we see this very clearly in the book of Daniel, when Daniel was praying, right? There are the, uh, the, uh, the angels, uh, the, uh, uh, oh, the kingdom Jesus. of Persia, right? There Jesus. you have the, uh, the angels, they're ruling, they're trying to maneuver the world situation to, to hinder God's move. So here in the book of Daniel indicates that all nations on the earth are under the rule of Satan in the air, all nations, all nations on the earth are under the rule. So two says through the church, God will make his wisdom known, not mainly to human beings, 
but to those rebellious angels who are the followers of God's enemy. Satan thought he was wise. He was very clever, right? God had the intention to get into man. God created man wonderfully. Satan said, okay, I know. I will be the first to get into man. Then he entered into the man's flesh. That became a mouse trap. Right? He was not able to get out. Then, then Christ crucified him on the cross. He had no Hallelujah. Way out, right? That Amen. was God's wisdom. Then mm-hmm. we receive this Christ. Right? Satan has also injected his satanic nature in us. Well, mm-hmm. Satan thought he, he was quite, quite smart. Well, God has a way to become, to have Christ to become our wisdom, right? To save us to the uttermost, our entire being, spirit, soul, and body. So even, Jesus, says, even the rebellion of Satan is within the realm of God's wisdom. If it were not for Satan's rebellion, one says God's wisdom could not be made known in a full way. Well, think about it. If, if you don't have someone who is so terrible, try, try everything, right, to, to demolish, to damage, to, to do crazy things on this planet. It, it will not show God's wisdom in a full way. Satan had tried. Satan did his best, right? Uh, but, but God's wisdom, right, can be made known in a full way. Two, Satan has created many opportunities for God's wisdom to be manifested in a multifarious way. That is in various ways and aspects and from many angles. But even look at our salvation. When we come together, just think about what the Lord has done in each one of us. That Satan try right, do all kinds of things. But the Lord is able to gain all of us, mm. right, call us out of all mm. tribes and nations and tongues. This shows mm. his multifarious wisdom. Okay. Three, eventually Satan, God's enemy, will be subdued and will come to know God's multifarious wisdom. Mm-hmm. Satan will know one day he will see the church build up as the glorious church. Mm-hmm. See, when God's chosen and redeemed people, this is an important point, that partake and enjoy the riches of Christ. The, these riches constitute them the church. So what constitutes the church is that we need to partake and enjoy the riches of Christ. When we come together Outwardly, maybe we have the framework of the church, but what really constitutes the church is the partaking and enjoyment of the riches of Christ, through which God's multifarious wisdom is made known to the angelic rulers and authority in the heavenlies. Remember the previous point, Christ is our wisdom. Christ is a real wisdom. How can the church become the multifarious wisdom? Well, we need to partake. We need to enjoy. We need to be constituted with Christ as our wisdom. Mm. The day is coming when through the church, Satan and his angels will be put to shame. They will realize that everything they have done has given God the opportunity to manifest his wisdom. Last point is on the new Jerusalem. I will ask you a question. We have all these verses here in the book of Revelation. You can go back to read them. It does not mention the word wisdom. So how do we see that the new Jerusalem, right? uh, It will be full of wisdom. But here in this outline, you have two things. Number one, the builder, right? The architect and builder is God. God God is the most wise God, right? Remember what Isaac shared in the beginning, all these points. He will not, do something that's not full of wisdom, right? And the New Jerusalem is the ultimate consummation of the church. If the church is the multifarious wisdom of God, for sure, this consummation must be full of wisdom. So the New Jerusalem is designed, constructed by God. Well, this is the other thing. This New Jerusalem is constructed by God, the architect and builder of the city, which has foundation. Then, of course, we know that it's not a physical city. The key point is this point five. It says, in his wisdom, God constructs a new Jerusalem 
by dispensing himself. He is a wisdom. By dispensing himself as the architect and builder into our being. Have you seen this before? God, a lot of times when we think of a God as the architect and builder, well, he's outside, right? He's their building, he's a craftsman. But here it says, how does God construct a new Jerusalem? It's by dispensing himself, us, the architect and builder into our being. Mm -hmm. He's building himself into us. That, that he's the best architect and craftsman. So we're building this uh, marvelous new Jerusalem with him, right? In his wisdom, he's dispensing himself into us. If we realize that new Jerusalem is a sign, we also need to see that this is a sign. This is not a physical city, right? We will begin to see the wisdom of God in this city. But God, last point, God is a wise architect and builder who designs and builds such a city to be the full manifestation of his multifarious wisdom. Saints, this, uh, this outline is, is wonderful. We need to, we really need to keep all these points before us. We often forget. Uh, we, we know we all love to gain wisdom, but we, we have to be reminded, especially this verse in, in James, there can be human wisdom. There also can be uh, uh, the evil wisdom. Right? We have to gain Christ as our wisdom. Amen. We need to gain God uh, this, uh, oh, to, to dispense himself as the architect and builder. Then Amen. we can we, we can gain Christ right, as our, our, our righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. That church can be constituted with Christ to okay. displace his multifarious wisdom. Amen. Oh, sorry, Lord I Jesus. took a little long. Maybe we can have a couple, last couple of minutes. We can have a little overflow, or anyone who has some enjoyment. Uh, one thing I enjoyed about this is the dispensing of wisdom. Uh, Christ, Christ is wisdom to us from God. That means that we can experience this dispensing all through our daily life. It is not mm -hmm. just a one-time thing, or not just a in a meeting, but we can enjoy the dispensing of our rich, wonderful Christ, who is the wisdom <laughs> to us from God. And he will be uh, wisdom to us continually dispensed into us uh, by God in God's economy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, I enjoyed this same matter, this phrase, from God to us, <laughs> marvelous phrase. <laughs> Uh, regarding his divine transmission, of course, uh, in three matters, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. But I particularly uh, enjoy this transmission for our present need, our sanctification, our transformation of our soul, that we may have life and live because of him. To do what? To express him, to represent him. This is God's divine economy. And by receiving this divine transmission, even moment by moment, this wonderful economy of God is carried out in us. Praise the Lord through us. Amen. 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 Lord Amen. Jesus. Amen. Jesus. Lord. Joy that the uh, wisdom is a person. So as we know, the last book of our Old Testament is the uh, Malachi. And the Malachi end up with the sentence. And he will... Um, send a prophet like Elijah and coming for the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And he will turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the father. So hallelujah. We know Malachi and Matthew actually is side by side, but in between the uh, 400 years gap there. And in the beginning of the gospel, we can see that John, the Baptist, he just like, uh, just like Elijah, and he cried in the wilderness, prepare for the way of the Lord. And that's the preparation of the person, the Lord Jesus Christ to come. And the wisdom actually thread going through all the Bible. And um, Jesus himself said, 
I am greater than Solomon. There is one greater than Solomon is here. And he is the wisdom. He testified himself. He's the wisdom of God, from God. Mm-hmm. And uh, mm-hmm. I enjoy also the first Corinthians, the, um, the Paul said, the, actually the, in the book of uh, first Corinthians, in the first chapter, Paul said, uh, the, um, actually the w- wisdom of God supremely in the cross, Mm-hmm. show in the cross because to human thinking it was folly and the, in the first book yeah, yeah at the in Corinthians said Paul said it was foolish to the world but it was wisdom of God so um I enjoy that this is a real person so we can enjoy him in the uh, experiential way hallelujah amen mm-hmm. amen Lord Jesus amen Saying, should we end here? We need to keep ourselves mm-hmm. in the divine transmission. Amen. Amen. Present, practical, experiential wisdom to us. Amen. Amen. Yes. Matters yes. Right, and, and things. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Bye. Bye. Bye.